It's the late Patricia Angelin talking to you this evening from Alba Technique, and you are at all the feels. And I'm sorry I don't have any fresh flowers for you to look at. Uh, what you're looking at on the screen right now is a rock that I painted for my father and that he had in his office for many years. And it's a quote from Alexander Pope. And it says, a little learning is a dangerous thing. Drink deep or taste not the Pyurian spring. <laughs> That's the spring of knowledge from which Zeus supposedly um, was born, out of the spring of knowledge. And we are working with the springs of our emotions. So here we are together, and I thank you for joining me. Um, I've had a rather wonderful um, week of teaching at Alba Technique, in, um, and one of our um, very wonderful, experienced students who's at self-use has been not just once but twice um, with me, and he graciously attended class yesterday. And the reason you care about this is because we were talking a lot because the, the current students in, in the live in-person classes here in New York were asking him a lot of questions about what you do with this technique and um, different questions about what they were experiencing in their bodies um, when they were working on the Alba emoting emotional effector patterns of uh, Dr. Susanna Bloch and colleagues. So it was a rollicking, rollicking a couple of sessions. And um, one of the things that he said that I wanted to bring up that I didn't say anything about when we were together, so I'll ask him to listen to this, is he said, neutral is the body's natural state. And, you know, I have thought about this over many years because neutral, the desire to experience non-emotion just, and uh, while not being in a meditative state, which is also different because it's a different level of mind, but when, while fully present, while in the room, experience what neutral emotion feels like. And I think that we have come, because of all of the people um, in my generation who went east and studied Hindu philosophy and the various Buddhist philosophies um, and Zoroastrianism and dualist philosophies, um, they came to accept that we're not, in a way, we're not supposed to have emotion because emotion is what causes our suffering and to kind of get over it has got to be our goal. And with profound respect for this point of view and for the great good it has brought to the world and continues to bring to the world, I'm not sure that neurologically that's accurate. The jury is still out. But it seems to me that even though neutral and attaining neutral is what I came to this to get as an actor, um, I think after almost 30 years of working with Susanna Bloch on various continents, I have concluded that neutral is a wonderful baseline for us to know what it feels like kinetically in the body and that it's very difficult to attain a knowledge in the body of what true neutral feels like for you or for me or for anybody really takes a lot of time. We have a tendency to jump to conclusions that if we understand something intellectually, such as the need to go to neutral, that we're actually doing it, which is, as any of you who've ever been to an acting class can attest, not true. So I think it's wonderful for a baseline so that we can understand intellectually and emotionally, knowledge, body knowledge, what the each six universally natural emotional patternings in the body are, how they are distinct from each other, how entangled they are for each one of us as adults so that sometimes we're actually angry when we think we have anxiety or we are actually very anxious, you know, or the reverse, or, you know, fill in the blank, it can be anything because we're very complicated. But I don't think that neutral is the body's natural state. Pache to Mr. Stepney, who has given me permission to use his name, and another quote from him, which we're going to go to now. 
let the debate begin. Um, the other quote is, fear doesn't want to be named. It wants to hide. And that struck me. I can't give you the context in which it was, it was stated by Lawrence Stepney, but it's so true. Fear makes us want to hide. It makes us want to avoid. It makes us want to not do uh, most of the time. And that's why it's so easy for it to, as I say, go stealth. It goes stealth. And fear then becomes anxiety. When we push it down and push it down and push it down, after um, our wonderful bodies have been trying to tell us that there is a person or a sound or a, a taste or whatever it is that is dangerous to our organism, and we are told this, then uh, by the body, by, by the body um, having just a quick uptake of fear, the proper response, as we were discussing in class, is to look at it, to name it as fear, not to want to make it named any of the complicated connotative words that we grown-ups want to name things rather than to face that, yeah, I just had a little bit of a cortisol drop, an adrenaline uptake, and I am now nervous. I'm nervous. So what we want to do with our emotions is recognize that the emotions don't come from the thoughts. We don't think the emotion and make it so. The, although it's a, not even a nanosecond, the emotion is giving you information that there's been a stimulus and then the thought comes instantly upon it. And so you can know, I tell you this in all truth, if you have a thought about nervousness, or if your mind or heart races, or if you have, if you find that you can't keep your mind on, on one thing when you really need to concentrate, that is at its root, at its base, that's a fear response. And your best thing to do with all of your feels is to go, oh, deep breath in, ooh, interesting. Breath not going any lower than in here, or deep breath in and it goes down, but doesn't want to come all the way back out. I'm not getting rid of all that carbon dioxide on my out breath. Hmm, what does this mean, mind? What does this mean, body? Well, it means you're nervous. It means you're anxious. It means you are about something in your environment to some degree afraid. And our fear is not a bad thing. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Not that we're supposed to be afraid of fear, but what he was talking about was a war, uh, a war situation. And what he was talking about in that quote, it was Winston Churchill, World War II, is that um, it could make us not act. And in a wartime situation, of course, decisive action is required. Pat cannot go and hide and hide in her pillow. Pat cannot go to bed and avoid the taxes that need to be done that I am afraid of because I have difficulty with, with managing numbers. And it's a, um, a disability that I have. So, you know, so naturally anything that is logistically oriented or with numbers such as taxes, now nobody likes taxes. And there are loads of different reasons to be afraid of taxes. Maybe you've had a bad audit in the past. Maybe you simply fear an audit because you fear that your, that your, um, your record keeping isn't sufficient or just we fear that all these new IRS agents have now been hired to go out and get us the government spent so much money on COVID that now they need to have the coffers refilled from us. So there are all of these things are, are stimuli that can cause us to have fear reactions to such a thing, for my example, as filing taxes. But fear itself can also give us a nice kick in the proverbial. If I am afraid of doing taxes, maybe it means that I need to 
do whatever I need to do to just get busy. Maybe I need to not think that I have to do it all at once. I have to file it all in one day. Maybe, even though I'm late, I know that I did file an extension properly. So maybe I take a deep breath. Ooh, and another one. And a third one. Do you hear my voice going down for all its resonators? And all that was, my dear companions of this video, all that was was three breaths. You too can learn how to do the breaths that can do this for you. For me, it's been many long years of learning what the breaths aren't, even the deep breaths, what they aren't and what they are and naming them, and naming them specifically, and naming them clearly, and taking those names out of the old boxes that I had them labeled in and shut, and making a whole new box, a whole new box for all of my feelings now that I know and am able to differentiate between and among fear, anger, sadness, joy, tenderness, and erotic breathings, postural changes, microfacial changes, large muscle group changes. It all sounds very boring and technical, but as the student who came back after starting seven years ago, which is hard for me to believe, at self-use for a long time, using it as an actor, using it in life, however he chooses to experiment, coming back to report and answer questions of other people. Fear doesn't want to be named. It wants to hide. Face your fear, embrace it as a good thing giving you information, and see if you can use that most excellent prefrontal cortex to figure out what small things might be triggering that response in that moment? Sort of be like you would be training yourself as a puppy. If the puppy has an accident on the floor, what do you do? You go, no, and you stick its little nose in the feces, and then you look at it, you go, no, no. And so I think we have to, it's not a perfect analogy, but uh, we do need to, to look at our own emotions, to observe them in the body and to face them for what they are, rather than trying to avoid them by naming them something else that is more acceptable to our left brain. If you have any questions about this, I would be delighted to field them. You may um, email me at albatechnique at gmail.com. If you want, you may um, tell people that Alba Technique has a YouTube channel and it's under all the fields. Thank you so much for joining me. Be not afraid of your emotions. Be not afraid even of anxiety, even of nervousness. It's all good. It all has a reason. And anything whatsoever that is new to you, walking into a new room, meeting a new person, anything that's new that is not already known to your body, can create just a moment, just a frisson of, of a little tiny bit of fear body patterning. So I shall look forward to you, uh, to being with you uh, next week on Facebook Live and the following week on Instagram Live or at any time on the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being with me.